Hey, welcome back. This is episode number 13 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. So you can use the Raspberry Pi to control hardware components, yes, but there is so much more you can do. For example, you can start a web server hosted on the Raspberry Pi. That's what we are going to focus on in this tutorial and the following ones. I will show you how to create a web server using the Flask framework with Python. This skill set will be super useful for your next project. And let's jump directly into the code. So first of all, Flask is a Python module that you can import in your code, just like we imported any other Python module. And good news, it's already installed for you on the Raspberry Pi OS, so you don't need to do anything. You can just import it. And what we're going to import is not the full module, but one thing inside. So I'm going to do from Flask, like this, all lowercase, imports and then flask with an f uppercase okay so that's what we need to import let's just run that to see if it works and you see that we don't have any error so it means that it was correctly imported great then we will need to create so we're going to create an app so a flask app and let's just name it app that's going to be the web application you do app is equal to and then flask with open and close parentheses and inside this we will need to write exactly this so underscore underscore name and then underscore underscore so you have two underscores here on each side okay so there is not much to understand here it's just something that you have to write to start an application with flask so we have our app variable then what we will need to do is to create some roots and i'm gonna come back to roots in just one minute so when you have a web server you will have urls you will have roots to different functionalities so for example if you go to a website so example.com slash something okay the slash something is going to be a root and for each root we're gonna create a new function all right let's keep that for in just one minute now i'm gonna do app dot run okay so you create the app then you're going to create some roots and then that's going to be the last thing you do is app.run and inside the parentheses you're going to put host is equal to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 so you just write this and then you close the parentheses all right so this is going to run the application and it's going to pause the program here and when you press ctrl c it's going to exit let's just try this okay and you see, well, you might think that we have an error here. So you can run it here from Thony and from the terminal is going to be the same. And we have a warning here in, in red in, in Thony. So you see the app is kind of running and you have a warning because this is a development server, etc., etc. But this is fine, okay? We are just using Flask for small applications and for tests. So it's not really a production environment. Okay, so we can just ignore this warning. And then I well I make sure that I select the shell and I press Ctrl C and you see we exit. Great, so the app is working now. Let's add a root. So to add a root, you will need to add this specific syntax with at app dot root open close parentheses and inside we're gonna write for example slash. Okay, so the slash is going to be the homepage kind of the homepage. If you go to example.com slash well you don't add any slash it's just going to be the home page and after we have this we need to create a function i'm going to name it index so usually the function for the home page is going to be named index you can name it as you want okay it doesn't really matter and what do i need to do from this function well i can do whatever i want and then i need to return a string the string is going to be what is going to be displayed on this uh, root here on the home page and well you can return anything you just need to return a string so it can be a very simple string for example hello uh, from flask like that that's valid but then also of course you can create a complete html page and just return the html as a string but for now let's keep things very simple so that's gonna be enough for our first application let's run that and well we still have all of those logs and you can see that we have here you can click on for example the first url here we click here that's gonna open a web browser and as you can see so in a web browser we have hello from flask 
so that's correctly working, we can get the result from the web server. Now I'm going to give you a few more details so you understand a bit more about all that. So first you can see that when we have a request, so basically when we open a page, it's going to make a request to the server here, and the server is going to return whatever, for example, in this function. So here it's going to return some HTML or some text. If I refresh, you can look at the bottom here. If I refresh, you see we have a get and then 200. So this is going to get some HTML here, which is just a string. And 200 is the code that basically means success. So if you see 200, it means you could correctly get the result from the server. Right? So every time I refresh, I do a new request and I get the string. Now, as you can see here, I have, so that's an IP address and then I have a colon and then I have another number. This number is the port. So you have the combination of IP address and port and the port it's 5,000. Okay, that's the default port for Flask. But let's say I write something else, for example, 5001. You see that we cannot reach the web server because this doesn't exist. If I go back to 5000, it's working. Okay. And what is this here? 127.0.0.1. This you will get it every time. So this is an IP address that just corresponds to this machine. So in any, basically any device, if you write this IP address, that's going to correspond to this machine. It's also called local host. And actually, you can just write, instead of this, you could write local host and press enter. And you see it's also working. All right. So the 127.0.0.1 and local host basically can be useful if you want to test a URL directly from the same device. So if you run the server on the Raspberry Pi, then you have a web browser on the Raspberry Pi and you can just type this address. Okay. But now if I come back to the logs, you see I have another address, so I can run that too. And it's also working. And this, you can see, this is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Actually, I can find that with the terminal as well. If I do hostname dash I uppercase, you see that's my IP address. All right, so if you type this IP address in a web browser and then call on with the port, which is 5000, then you will be able to get hello from Flask. And this not just from the Raspberry Pi, but from any device that's connected on the same network. So here I'm using VNC. I could disconnect from VNC and just open a web browser on my Windows and I will be able to get access directly to the web server from the Raspberry Pi or also from the smartphone here because I'm using the smartphone as a hotspot. So the smartphone is on the same network. I can just open my smartphone, open a web browser, and type this exactly and I will also get the same results. So if you have another device connected to the Raspberry Pi, I encourage you to test that to see that you can access the URL from outside of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and that's gonna be quite powerful because then you can run the server on the Raspberry Pi and you can access to the functionalities from another device on the same network, not from the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and the last thing here, uh, this, so I'm going to come back to the port. This is 5000. If you want to change it, you can here in app.run, you have host and then you can do port is equal to, and let's say, for example, 8500. So you can put any value you want, but it needs to be minimum 1024 because all the previous values are reserved ports. Okay, so 1500, for example, is a valid one. I'm going to control C here. I'm going to run again. And you see we have the new URL here with the port. So if I go back here, you see that with 5000, it's not working. I have to put 8500. Okay, now it's working. Great. So you see with just a few lines, you have created your first web server on the Raspberry Pi. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.